25th at 4 p.m. Um, Direct. Commissioner Moriarty. Here. Commissioner Lemon. Here. Commissioner Jay. Here. 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 All right. Uh, first motion uh, is to. Regarding the approving the agenda, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the agenda as presented. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next, the minutes of the previous meeting, Commissioner Lundin. Motion is to approve the minutes of the Special Board of Public Works meeting of April 19th, 2022. The motion is to approve the minutes of the Board of Public Works meeting of April 28th, 2022. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, and I did not recognize that I believe Alderman Jetty is on the meeting via Zoom. There he is. Yes, I'm here, Mayor. I, I don't think your microphone is turned on. It's not. Okay, that's good now. Thank you. All right, I wasn't. I wasn't talking close enough, I guess. Uh, all right, so uh, Alderman Jenny is here. Public comment. Any member of the public wish to address the board? All right, wastewater. Uh, item A. Uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the way the user warrants as presented. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, motion passes. Item B, uh, Commissioner Lemon. To approve an amendment to the contract with Wright Pierce for the preliminary design plans and specifications for the dry well, vi dry well valve and pipe replacement project in an amount not to exceed $78,300. Funding for this contract will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund, Wastewater Activities, Wash Press Upgrade, and Screening Odor Control. Um, Mr. Boucher. Thank you, Mayor. Dave Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. Uh, Wright Pierce is currently working on preliminary designs for our valve and pipe replacement in our main building of the wastewater facility. Uh, we have two CIC projects, uh, the screening garage order control unit and the wash press chute modification. Uh, these two projects are in close uh, proximity to the project that's going on with the valve replacement, kind of works in conjunction with it. Uh, this motion is to modify the Wright Pierce contract to do the preliminary design for these two other smaller projects. Um, they have, they both worked on, well, Wright Pierce have worked on these in the 20 year facility plan. Uh, they have working knowledge of what goes on with these processes and it would be beneficial to us to use them uh, to do the engineering work on this one as well. Uh, the odor control unit is when we pull material out of the wastewater that could damage our pumps, it goes into a, a garage, into a dumpster, which the odors are pretty nasty. So this is, currently has no odor control to it. And the other one is a, when the material comes up, it gets squeezed, washed, and put into the can uh, because of the design of the chute it's up against the ceiling uh, so it clogs up often with sand uh, so it has to be modified and lowered so nothing clogs in the system because it's we have maintenance crews that tear it apart all the time to to clean it out discussion or questions all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed motion passes uh, item C, Commissioner Shea. The motion is to approve change order number one for the purchase of chemical sodium hypochlorite in the amount of 
$28,000 from Borden and Remington of Fall River, Mass. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Account Classification 61 Supplies and Materials. Thank you, Dave Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. The sodium hypochlorite is the disinfection product that we use, uh, disinfect the wastewater before it goes to the river. Uh, we had budgeted based off of historical usage. Uh, we had some heavy rainfalls. We ended up using a lot more hypochlorite at the beginning of the season than we expected. Uh, so this amount would cover the remaining purchases to get us through the rest of this fiscal year. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item D, Commissioner Moriarty. I move to approve change order number one for the purchase of chemical polymer from Polydyne of Riceboro, Georgia in the amount of $39,000. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater, Fund Wastewater, Account Classification 61, Supplies and Materials. Mr. Boucher. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, similarly, this uh, is a, we purchased this at the beginning of the year. Uh, we used historical data to uh, gauge how much we'd, we'd need for money. Uh, we had some supply chain issues with polymer. It's the chemical that we use to bind the sludge to remove water from it to dry it up. Um, we had to purchase smaller amounts just to make sure that we had some. Uh, the smaller amounts we purchased in totes was more expensive than the bulk deliveries we get. Uh, so that chewed up some of the funding. So this is uh, the money's being asked for is to get us through the rest of the, this fiscal year. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, we might need you on the next one too. Which one is it? Uh, yes. Uh, this is a Board of Aldermen referral. Uh, Commissioner Lemon. Uh, the motion is R22-029, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to borrow an amount not to exceed $6,900,000 through the issuance of bonds and or a loan through the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services State Revolving Loan Fund for the wastewater treatment plant dry well valve replacement project. Thank you. Uh, this project is uh, the valve and pipe replacement. So all the wastewater that comes to the wastewater facility goes through one main pipe. It's a 36 inch steel pipe and pushed up two stories. Uh, during our 20 year facility plan, we did some pipe thickness testing of this pipe. Uh, it has significant wear. Uh, so it needs to be replaced, plus we have a series of large valves that also need to be replaced because they're not holding sewage back, so we can't shut down the, the valves so we can replace parts or work on our pumps. Uh, so this is to replace all that. Uh, part of the challenge to this is up to 50 million gallons a day can flow through these pipes. So to do this project, we have to have a bypass set up. It's a temporary bypass, unfortunately. Uh, we looked at putting in a permanent one, but due to the location, because it's two stories on the ground and in our facility, there's not enough room to do that. So they do a temporary bypass while they're replacing all this piping. Can I answer any other questions if you have any? Questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. We're now on to the solid waste department. Uh, Item A, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to award a three-year contract for the transportation and processing of the City of Nashua's single stream recyclables at an annual cost of $400,000 to Casella Recycling LLC of Charlestown, Massachusetts, pending approval of the FY23 operating budget and subject to annual budget approvals. Uh, the term of this contract will be from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. Funding through Department 168 Solid Waste Fund Solid Waste Account Classification 55 Other Contracted Services. Jeff LaFleur, Superintendent of Solid Waste. 
uh, we went out to bid to get processors and uh, hauling for this uh, for our, all of our single stream recycling that we take into our facility. Uh, we ended up getting three bids back. We did an analysis and come to find out Casella, who's been working with us for 12 plus years, 15 plus years, won the bid again. They're our lowest uh, bidder on this project. So they'll be hauling our uh, recycling right out of our facility again. Questions? Uh, Commissioner Shea. <clears throat> I know that um, there's been kind of a, a paradigm shift for single stream recycling and the, and the value of, of these products uh, on, on the market due to the, the Chinese shifting their policy. Um, what, what's the state of that these days? We actually just got an invoice today from Casella. We're making $3.40 a ton on recycling. So it, it shifted back to a positive for us. Oh, that's great. Oh, wow. And how, how um, deep in the hole were we at, at our worst point? Um, at, as, at our worst point, we were selling our uh, shipping out recycling at $150 a ton. So wow. we were paying $150 a ton. Again, the markets fluctuate a lot, I mean, from month to month. So next month, we could be paying $10 a ton. We could be making money. We, we just don't know it because it's so volatile. Yeah, and in, inflation on things like aluminum and, and all of that stuff has a big part in it, huh? Exactly. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. And the 400000 is contingent. I mean, that is could be spent, but maybe not, depending on what the what the cost Exactly. Are. That's just a, an estimate of how much it could possibly cost us. You it know, could be it, zero. It could be zero. It could be a positive. We're not 100% we're not sure. We just, you know, we, we go with what we've budgeted five years ago when we were making money. You know, we have to take our worst case scenario and just to be safe to have the money ready to go if we do need to use it. Commissioner Moriarty. Thank you. So, Superintendent, just so I'm clear, so the 400 is a cap. It's a top number. It won't. It can't go higher than that. It it, it could if it if it could. reaches the mark. Uh, we had it happen. Uh, I think two years ago, yeah. we had to extend it or ask for more money. Um, I did an average. It covers us for about 3,000 tons of material at the worst case scenario. Um, as I said, we came back. I think two years ago for a, a, an added amount to cover us to the end of the year. This could happen again, but we're, we feel very confident that we should be fine. And Go ahead. And, and if this approved amount of funding is not spent, um, would, and, and there were some desire to use it towards something else, would that come back before the board? Or is there some kind of like for like window um, within which this funding could be repurposed for um, uh, other contracting services? Typically what we do in, in my department is we escrow or uh, we encumber the money. So $400,000 will come out of my other contracted services and be encumbered into a, a fund that's set aside just for this. So yes, if, I have to, if, I, if, we, if we wanted to use the money for something else, I would have to come ask for approvals to take it out of that line and use it somewhere else. Thank you. Well, let me just clarify that. We, you would need permission to transfer it. Yeah. Um, what you would need permission for is to expend yeah. it on something. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Thank team. you. Just a further question on the recycling, because we did invest in the covering for the, to keep the recyclables dry, and so the weight is less. Yes, sir. How, how did that all play out with the contract? It, it worked out in our favor that we weren't paying the water weight or the snow that fell on top of the recycling. So when the markets were really bad, we were paying, you know, a less amount. So we didn't have to pay for the water or the snow getting loaded into the trucks. So it, 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 the, the tarp itself made its money back easily. Great. And did that have something to do with the three bidders? Because in the past, we haven't had three bidders. Yes, that, and, and that's why um, specifically one of the vendors bid it on this because we did put a cover up. All right, any other questions, comments? Uh, if not, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Moriarty. Mm -hmm. The motion is to approve the purchase of a set of four wheels and teeth for the Caterpillar A26K compactor from Karen Compactor Company of Escalon, California in the amount of $63,525. The 
funding through department 168 solid waste fund solid waste account classification 54 vehicle repairs and maintenance Jeff LaFleur superintendent solid waste <clears throat> these wheels are the wheels that are on our big compactor which crushes the trash and compacts the trash to uh, get us the most airspace and best usage of our airspace at the landfill uh, the teeth that are on this compactor here are getting worn down so much that it's not compacting 100% properly. It, it's something that happens every three to five years that we have to do it, just like wheels on a, on a vehicle. When they get bald, you have to uh, change them up. Uh, we had an option to uh, cut the teeth off of this and weld them on, which actually came out at a higher price than buying these four wheels from Karen Compactor. I've been doing a lot of talking with them. We specifically buy from Karen because they're superior wheels. They're actually giving us a good trade-in, and uh, for this price, we're saving at about uh, $13,000 instead of just buying teeth and having them welded on. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Now we're on to the street department. Uh, item A, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve change order number two to the 2020 <coughs> pavement markings contract with K5 Corporation of Rockland, Massachusetts in the amount of $162,000. Funding for this contract is through Department 161, Streets, Fund, General, Account Classification, 54, other services. Mr. Abara. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Johnny Barra, Street Superintendent. So K-5 Corporation was awarded back in June 2020, our striping contract. And we contacted them and asked them if they'd hold their price in this market. That's phenomenal. They agreed to do so. So I'd like to encumber our operating budget monies for striping into the existing contract. They do our long lines, our crosswalks, our thermoplast work. So that's letters and symbols and stop bars, stuff like that. Any questions? I'd be happy to answer. Anyone? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Street department item B, Commissioner Shea. The motion is to approve change order number one to the Fimble Garage Door contract with Fimble Garage Doors of Merrimack, New Hampshire in the amount of $61,615.70. Funding for this contract is through Department 161, Streets, Fund, Escrow, Activity, Garage Door Replacement. John Ibera, Superintendent, Street Department. Uh, back in November of 21, we went out to bid for replacement of our overhead doors, or at least five doors that we earmarked as the worst of the worst. Uh, we had money in escrow to cover that bid. Not knowing where they came in, we chose five uh, after they secured the bid, found that we had money left. So knowing this, I asked if they would hold their price and we could get more work done. They agreed to do so. So with the balance of the money, we earmarked six more doors and I'd like to get this change order approved and change those doors. We only have one garage, right? It's the one that we toured yes. where the birds flew in through the holes in the doors? That's correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can see where I'm going with this. Yes. Yeah. Will we be all shored up um, after that, or will there be more work to do to keep the birds from coming? <laughs> That should secure the bird traffic, yes. <laughs> Squirrels uh, over there. There's plenty more work to do over there. Those doors are the original doors and are in poor shape due to the corrosive environment that we're working in with all the salt. Yeah. But out of the 26, that gets us 11. So we're putting a dent in it. Yeah. Thank you. Great. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. The past. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Ibarra. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Uh, engineering Department. Item A, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the sewer service permits and fees as submitted. 
All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve poll license petition number 21-1616. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item C, Commissioner Shea. To approve the engineering contract for pavement management services with Stantec Consulting Service Incorporated of Burlington, Massachusetts in an amount not to exceed $31,700. Funding will be through Department 160 Admin Engineering Fund Bond Activity Paving. Um, Mr. Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dan Hudson, City Engineer. Um, we've been working with Santec since 2016. They help us with our pavement management program. Um, each year they assess a third of the city and we do that on a rotating basis, uh, uh, updating our PCIs or pavement condition indexes. Um, so this is a continuation of the work we've previously done um, and we'll do uh, a third of the city this year as well. This year it's the southern third. Anyone? I, actually, I do have a question. Uh, Commissioner Shea. Do, do we often bond amounts of this size? It seems very small for some. It, it, am I correct in my understanding that this is a bond to pay? But it, it's part of a, of a much bigger. A bigger bond? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's part of the paving bond. Okay. And because it's related to the paving contract, can be paid out of that. It will be at. Okay. Got so it. this bond is, you know, we've been bonding $7.5 million a year. So it's just part of a much out larger. Out of that $7.5 million. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And then it's the expense that we're approving, whereas the bond is already. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. Thank you. Now, on a related subject, um, well, why don't we vote and then I'll mention it. Uh, any other questions, comments? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> so I was invited to go to a national com company called GSSI, which I had not, you know, wasn't familiar with. And the site on Simon Street where Ferrofluidics used to be, if you um, remember okay. them. And uh, they, the GSI, GSSI expertise uh, has to do with using radar to detect things under the surface of the ground, the pavement, the ice, you know, things like this. And uh, one, ap one of their applications is that they can detect the, they can determine the compaction level of asphalt. And they now have a product that can do that, and huh. it, the compaction needs to be between 93 and 96 percent to have maximum durability. And that means uh, no more, you know, somewhere between 7 and 4 percent oxygen bubbles or pockets is the ideal situation. So. Um, I didn't know, you know, that this was one of their products, so uh, we're going to go back over there and kind of check it out with uh, Lisa, uh, commission, uh, Director Photo, may maybe Mr. Hudson, Mark Saunders, and just uh, see, you know, if it would have an application for us. Do we check compaction now? <clears throat> we, do do, we do check compaction. We contract with uh, SW Cole. They're doing the, the, the plant material testing and all those, all those sorts of things, but also we do uh, some compaction testing. It's not a you know, full pavement width, but we do um, representative samples. Um, and how is that done? Uh, we do, there, there's, uh, typically there's pavement cores taken, and then that, that is uh, tested. So these things you drive, you can either, it's a, there's a handheld device or a larger vehicle kind of thing. Yeah. Or it can be mounted on a paving machine, right? So they can determine it as they go, yeah. and uh, you know, you just the, so there's no penetration of the asphalt. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Can Anyways. you can you do anything to fix the compaction probably, after it's probably, already? Probably not. Oh, okay. But the one that, as they explained it, I mean, you would have to check this out. But as they explained it, uh, and it seems like they 
know what they're talking about. I mean, they're involved in a lot of different things. But um, if you use it on a roller, paving roller, uh, it determines the compaction as you're going along. So that if the compaction were less than ideal, it would tell the operator you should do more rolling. Hmm. So it can do it as the asphalt is being applied. So, it, um, but they have other application. You know, they they're, they're used in archaeology. You know, in the in the ice caps to look down and you know various things. Uh, they say they're the only U.S. competitor in this market, in this kind of with this kind of equipment. Anyway, kind of interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, I I, I I am aware of that type of technology, but we haven't to date implemented that in our paving program. Anyway, we could go over there and yeah, that'd be great. talk yeah. to them and check it out. Uh, we'll arrange we'll that soon. Um, that was item C, item D, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the engineering services contract for the safe transportation for every pedestrian project with Hoyle, Tanner, and Associates, Inc. of Manchester, New Hampshire in an amount not to exceed $59,980. Funding will be through Department 160 Admin Engineering. Fund grant and prior year escrow. Activity rectangular rapid flashing beacon step grant. Um, so we were, the city was awarded a grant um, for this project, uh, as noted, it's a safe transportation for every pedestrian uh, program or step program. Um, the, uh, the, the uh, grant included $60,000 of design money. Um, so we're going to work collaboratively with Hoyle Tanner and Associates. We had selected them for roadway, bridge, traffic, and bicycle pedestrian um, services. Um, so we're, we're basically... Uh, Internal city staff, engineering staff is working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with them. We'll do some of the design. They'll do some certain aspects of it as well um, in performance of this project. Um, the project involves attempting to make pedestrian crossing safer. Um, the grant specifically noted 20 locations in the downtown area, um, and those locations will be uh, assessed. Primarily what the improvement is is putting up the rectangular rapid flashing beacons like you see on Main Street. Um, those have been proven to be very effective at uh, you know, helping drivers be aware that there's a crossing occurring and yielding to people crossing. Um, so it's an it's a, it's a interesting and uh, exciting project uh, through the, working through the DOT and uh, Hoyle Tanner will be our, par our partner in it. Commissioner Shea. Uh, there were some folks who came in, I, I think it was before uh, we, we started to serve, who um, raised the issue, uh, or it might have been one of our first meetings, um, who raised the issue of, I think it was, was it East Hollis Street? Um, Are you talking about across from Fotines? Fotines, yeah, yeah. At, at Fotines Market. I, I think Commissioner Moriarty had them come, uh, yeah. come and speak, right? Yeah. Um, it, is that area something that could be evaluated as part of this project? Um, not as part of this project, because this project is specific to other locations. But we do have a project planned, a West Hollow Street corridor study, uh, we'll, which will look at the entire corridor, including that specific location where, the, unfortunately, there was a fatality that occurred. Um, uh, we, are, we, are, we will be looking in the near future to move that project ahead. I think we've secured funding or identified funding for it. So we'll be bringing that soon to the board for approval. You, Thank you, you. should you should see that in uh, at our June meeting for approval. That's great. Thank you. Where are the rectangular flashing beacons placed? Are they like, you know, I'm thinking of the bollards are in the ground. Where are the rectangular flashing beacons? So they're, uh, they're a supplement to the pedestrian crossing signs, both, okay. both ends of a crosswalk. You usually have a signpost and signs. You know, you have to do a little bit beefier signpost, uh, and then above and below the signs, or above or below the signs, you have that additional uh, blinking yellow indication. Oh, okay. um, the real benefit is people push a button and they flash, 
they're not flashing all the time. Yeah. You know, some sometimes people in the, the older technology would put up a blinking sign at an intersection, there's a blink all the time, and people tune it out over time. Yeah. These, when somebody pushes a button, they're crossing, and it's a yellow indication. So once the pedestrians cross, they can continue on their way. Uh, but it, it, it really um, works well to have that um, pedestrian activated indi indication. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item E, uh, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve Amendment 1 to the Engineering Services Contract for tasks required by the EPA MS4 permit with Hazen and Sawyer PC of Manchester, Mass, in an amount of $40,427,000. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Activity Stormwater Abatement. So um, the, the, we, we, we discharge stormwater to our area waterways under a EPA permit. It's through the 2017 Municipal Separated Storm Sewer System, uh, or MS4, which probably most of you have heard of. Um, that permit requires us to do certain things. One of them is to test uh, or visit all the outfalls uh, during dry weather to see if there's any flow discharging. You wouldn't expect to have flow discharging during dry weather at a stormwater outfall. Um, so if there is, you sample it and then, um, you know, to track if there's any illicit discharges, that sort of thing. So it's uh, a re requirement of our permit. The city has about 359 publicly owned stormwater outfalls. To date, we've uh, screened 260 of them. This amendment will allow us to screen the rest of them um, and do the reporting necessary as part of our annual MS4 reporting. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item F, Commissioner Shea. Uh, to consider the hardship request from Liberty Utilities to excavate in Karen Avenue and Santerre Street to install gas mains. So we have a couple more moratorium items tonight. Um, this first one here is, as noted, uh, to excavate in Karen Avenue and Santier. Uh, we understand that the existing steel main is susceptible to corrosion, so Liberty's looking to replace it. Um, uh, they also have some other uh, area project work, which I believe we have a representative on the phone, uh, Brad Marks, that could speak to. Uh, I will note that this this will support uh, a pump station project we're doing. We need backup power generation, and we want a gas service uh, to supply that for a sewer pump station. Um, Karen Avenue was paved uh, four, four, four years ago, or actually is four years expired in the moratorium, and then... Uh, Santier, the moratorium will be ending in October. Um, so in general, we support this because they will do the, the milling and the restoration um, that they otherwise wouldn't have to do if they wait another year to do this. And, and again, I believe uh, there's Liberty representative on the phone if you have any questions for him. Uh, yes, Mr. Hudson, Brad Marks from Liberty Utilities is, is on the phone. All right. And <clears throat> does anybody have any comments or questions from for Liberty or Mr. Hudson? All right, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item G, Commissioner Moriarty. The motion is to consider the hardship request from Liberty Utilities to excavate in Swan Street to install a gas service for 17 Swan Street. Uh, I'll introduce this and let Brad uh, speak to it a little bit more, but... Um, Swan Street was last paved in September of 2017, so at the, uh, later this year that will be coming out of moratorium. And uh, Brad can speak uh, to what the purpose of this work is. Yeah, so um, the, the intention of this project is to uh, basically convert an existing service from the low pressure system to our high pressure system on Swan Street. And what this does is this enable, it enables us to abandon the existing leak prone pipe that's on Lake Street. Uh, Lake Street was was uh, was flagged earlier by the city as um, 
a street that um, it was desired to be paved soon. So, um, you know, we've been working out on Lake Street, replacing the existing main, uh, but in order to fully abandon the main on Lake Street, um, there are services that we need to convert over to high pressure, and uh, this being one of them on Swan Street. And I believe Swan is in a situation where it's in the last year of its moratorium as well. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Shea. Um, so my understanding is that there will be a, a pipe left in the ground that will be out of service after this. Is that right? Correct. Um, and is that pipe something that could corrode over time and collapse? Uh, no, it, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't collapse. So we're talking about you know two inch uh, and, and, and four inch main. Um, typically, when we when we abandon pipe, um, especially of that size, we do leave it in place, um, and they do not have a history of causing any long term damage to the to the road. I think is what you're kind yes. of getting at there. But um, yeah, no. We, I, typical practice is to leave our old uh, old gas mains in, in place abandoned. Okay. Yeah. I, no, no gas in them though. I, I was picturing like a, like a 16 inch pipe or something like that, 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 you know, in 50 years oh, might, no. might collapse, but, um, good. I, I appreciate, no. uh, you fielding that question. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Commissioner Moriarty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was just wondering if, if these two motions are is it a coincidence that they're close to the end range of the moratorium or are we trying to work with liberty to assure that it's uh no it's not a coincidence no. we're, we're, we're we're working with liberty to try to uh you know make sure we bring things that um you know we can support um and push back maybe more than we had in the past and some things that were newer but i mean you will i'm sure see in the future some newer stuff it just happens these are closer to the end of the moratorium i really i appreciate your work mm -hmm. Yeah, the effort. Yeah, and, and, and Lake Street is just, um, the nature of that job is pretty unique where, like I said, in order to abandon the existing leak-prone pipe, we need to address uh, issues on some of the other neighboring streets. Um, basically, we need to convert them to high pressure, to abandon the low pressure. Um, and, and unfortunately, that has involved uh, moratorium excavation, which we've We've continued to go in front of the board with these requests. Yep. Uh, I'll just say further, we did, uh, so we did get bonding authority for the second uh, half of the 10-year program as, as was outlined. So that gives us, you know, a good uh, map going forward in terms of, you know, funding assurance for the future here. So we um, will be meeting with the utility companies individually, Liberty included to kind of look holistically at, uh, okay, here's what we intend to pay over the next five years. It's going to be quite a bit of area and work with them and their capital programming to figure out how that uh, impacts on a regional basis, going to try to time those things. I think in the past, you know, if you, uh, and we have been giving them three-year lists, but if you're just looking at the street this year and next year and next year and not thinking about the one five yeah. years out, then, then uh, what's created a problem is, is they need, they, they, you know, they need to do work that supports that. So. Um, we're we're uh, excited to engage them and the other uh, utilities, uh, you know, to look broader at uh, regionally, basically, to see where we can avoid, you know, future issues with conflicts with recent paving and, and gas work and uh, correspondingly uh, water work. All right. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item H, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to consider the proposed request from Liberty Utilities to make an alternate moratorium restoration for gas leak repairs on Broad Street. So in uh, August of 2021, um, there was a, a major event uh, where there was uh, gas leaks kind of occurring in a chain reaction sort of situation. And I believe it was uh, nine locations along uh, Broad Street, individual separate locations, uh, they had to excavate and make some uh, repairs. <coughs> um, unfortunately, Broad Street was paved in 2019, so fairly recently. Um, these uh, gas issues, though, all occurred on one side of Broad Street. Um, so rather than sticking strictly to the moratorium requirements and going to each of the nine locations and milling the full width of Broad Street, um, 
we believed it appropriate and uh, Liberty is proposing to mill one half of the roadway uh, all along the south side so that um, you know there'll be uh, new new pavement basically within this whole footprint of the area that was impacted um, and no cuts in the uh, north side of the street which wasn't impacted by the gas event and how long will that overlay be or that um, let me see it is in the memo let me, let me just double check it's it's uh, uh, about 1,500 feet. Yeah, 1,500 feet, about a quarter mile. So the, the, the mill area is 23 feet wide by 1,550 feet long. Okay. Uh, questions, discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item I. Thank Com you. Commissioner Shea. The motion is to approve the engineering services contract with Hainer Swanson Incorporated of Nashua, New Hampshire for sewer and drainage analysis and design in the amount not to exceed $75,000. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Activity CSO Flooding and Stormwater Abatement. So um, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, as you know, we do a lot of sewer work and, and uh, you know, drainage repairs as we do road paving. But um, at times, and we try to do that collaboratively as part of those projects, uh, but at times um, we would like to take the drainage design a little bit further and get ahead of some of the projects. We have some areas where we'd like to look at separation of stormwater from, from uh, combined uh, stormwater wastewater. Um, but uh, it's, you know, it gets complicated. We're, we're currently we're looking at um, Factory Street. And is there any opportunity now or in the future to do some separation there? We plan to pave Factory Street. We want to, you know, even if we can't do the full project now, we want to at least accommodate what portion of it we can under the Factory Street before we pave Factory Street. Um, uh, that's just one example. Um, and then our MS4 permit requires that we look at um, some alternate stormwater treatment methodologies and things like that and implement some pilot projects. So, we really need some engineering support for those uh, to move those things forward, and so we're proposing to contract with Hainer Swanson, and a local engineering company, for that support. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. Motion passes. Uh, next item, J. Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve a drain layers license for SADCO site development of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in accordance with Nashua City Code 255-19, issuance of drain layers license, and authorize the Division of Public Works to temporarily suspend the license if work is found to be unsatisfactory unsatis during an initial six-month probationary period. So not a lot to say other than we received this application, we checked the references and found them satisfactory, and this temporary six-month probationary period, as we discussed last time, we're going to attach to all new uh, drain layer licenses, so it's not something to be specifically concerned about. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item K, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve a drain layers license for Severino Trucking of Candia, New Hampshire, in accordance with the Nashua City Code. 255-19 issuance of drain layers license and authorize the Division of Public Works to temporarily suspend the license if work is found to be unsatisfactory during an initial six-month probationary period. Uh, again, received application. Uh, Severino is a uh, you know good a, a large contractor. Um, check the references; they were all good. I will note that Severino is currently working for the city on the new middle school project. Um, so, you know, w with this approval, they will lay the sewer service for that project in addition to the other work that they're doing. And my understanding is they're doing a, an excellent job out there. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Item L, Commissioner Shea. The motion is to approve a drain layers license for George E. Merrill and Son Incorporated of Salem, New Hampshire, in accordance with Nashua City Code 
issuance of drain layers license and authorize the Division of Public Works to temporarily suspend the license if work is found to be unsatisfactory during an initial six month probationary period. Similar to the others, we received application, checked the references, they're satisfactory, and um, so we, haven't, we, we find no reason not to uh, approve this request. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We have informational item street opening permits issued for streets in moratorium. Unless anybody has any questions there, we'll move on to administration. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Thank you. And we'll turn it over to the director. Okay, so we have, uh, thank you, Mayor. First, we have uh, budget transfers um, in April. Um, if you have any questions, they'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, if not, I'll just move right on to the director's report. Diane, if you could just learn that from me. Sorry, I'm having some technical issues. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention is that we have tomorrow evening, we have a joint BPW and infrastructure committee meeting. Um, and that has um, unfortunately, uh, through no fault of our own, has been <laughs> moved a little bit. I just want to clarify that it is tomorrow evening. It will be held at 6.30 p.m., not 6 p.m. Um, and it will be at Nashua North. And um, so um, just want to clarify that for everyone. I know Alderman Jetty's on the line and he'll <coughs> be present at that meeting, hopefully, as well. So it will definitely be at Nashua North at 6.30 tomorrow evening. Yes, I saw the notices, uh, you know, changing it to location and then changing it back, changing the sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One else that I'll be there. Thank you. advance to the next slide Diane okay um, so this is Pioneer Drive sunshine paving completed work um, as part of the paving program which included milling and paving and the installation of under drain uh, to address groundwater along the gutter line and also ADA ramp construction and the road was final paved on May 10th this is uh, West Hollis Street um, uh, sunshine uh, paving again uh, with their subcontractor milled West Hollow Street between Simon and Badger Streets on April 22nd uh, the millings were hauled to the landfill and stockpile, stockpile for future reuse and the road was swept after milling with traffic uh, reduced to one lane during the operation and uh, we can the next on the next slide you'll see that Sunshine Paving completed the binder on April 26th um, I, I think we talked a little bit about this um, already. Um, our Mine Falls Pedestrian Bridge. We have, um, fortunately, we have a temporary bridge uh, that's on a project in Peterborough that will be uh, brought to Nashua in late June or July and will be installed temporarily until we can um, obtain um, a permanent bridge. And this will be paid for out of the uh, Mine Falls cell tower account. So we're fortunate to have that that funding. We'll also be doing an evaluation of all the other existing new bridges and, and uh, coming up with a plan to make any additional repairs that are needed. Green Mountain Pipeline Services is uh, continuing the citywide closed circuit television inspection of sewers throughout the city. Uh, this work just went out to bid and approximately 14 miles of camera work will occur this season. SUR West is replacing a portion of sewer and separating sewer and drain along Pike Street as part of our sewer re rehabilitation program. Uh, this photo shows storm drain construction on May 20th. Uh, this again is SUR West completed rerouting of storm drains at the Burke Street and Major Drive intersection on May 4th to alleviate a sewer backup and prevent future clogging. Our very, very popular sunshades uh, are back up at Roby Park. Uh, and we've had a lot of positive feedback about yeah. these. Uh, this uh, is a picture of new bullpen mounds at Matt Doobie Field on the left. 
and the baseball infield at Haynes Park uh, was rototilled to improve playability. You can see that on the right. The fountains are, have been installed. Uh, they were installed on April 28th. The, we have um, hydro seating is taking place at Lincoln Park along the newly paved sidewalks and new sod has been laid in the Little League infield. So we continue to make improvements there. We are very excited to have our full summer fund program up and running this year. Um, it's, this is the first time in a couple of years, so it's yeah. very exciting. Our first event will be on June 18th from 10 to 1 and will um, include opening day and DPW day. So that's an event not to miss. There'll be a lot of, a lot of fun activities on that day. Lots of equipment and, and uh, fun things to do. Um, we, we have been doing some cleaning of some of the bridges in Mine Falls. Um, in this case, this is the bridge at Lincoln Park and we took the skirting wood panels off and pressure washed the bridge. Sign maintenance crews are striping crosswalks on uh, Franconia Street. So um, there was a question asked about what our crews do versus what we contract out. So um, our crews do as much as they can. We unfortunately cannot strike, do all of the crosswalks uh, in the city. So we do hire some of the crosswalks uh, through a contractor and all of the long lines and thermoplasts are done by a contractor. So we do we do, do as much as we can in house, but um, we just, shoot too much work for a small group. This is a, a sinkhole repair um, that was on, uh, from a failed structure on 2nd Street. We completed some much needed repairs to the parking lot at Udicky Park. Uh, there were lots of ruts and we smoothed everything out and added some additional gravel. So that's a big improvement to that parking lot. This is um, the crews repaired some broken up pavement at the corner of Alma and Len Road. Our, uh, we repaired our fuel pump pad at the solid waste department. Uh, the crews repaired sewer uh, due to a utility company accidentally driving a guide wire into a sewer line on Hopkins Street. We are doing a lot of repair, masonry repairs at Holman Stadium. We're doing that with our own uh, talented masons. Um, this, these are some of the brick caps that have been repaired. The pump station, the second phase of the pump stations is well underway and we're seeing progress at multiple stations. Here you can see Santerre, Blackstone and Maurice pump stations being worked on. Our laboratory supervisor, Michelle Gaudet, was awarded the Water Environment Federation's Laboratory Analyst Excellence Award for outstanding performance, professionalism, and contributions to the water quality and analysis profession for 2021. So that's, so that's very, that very exciting. So congratulations, Michelle. She's somebody that you probably don't see a lot because she's back in the lab at wastewater, but she, she really does a, she does a great job. Um, maybe one of these days we'll have her come to the meeting so you can meet. The, um, our crews annually take down and clean our chlorine tank uh, contact chambers. Um, here you can see one of the chlorine contact uh, chambers being cleaned and we have two of them. So when we take one offline, we use the other. The next household hazardous waste collection will be Thursday night, June 2nd from three to seven. And we have a new used motor oil storage tank at solid waste. And the, uh, just to mention that Memorial Day is coming up, so the Four Hills Landfill and Recycling Center will be closed on Monday, May 30th, and all curbside pickup will be delayed a day that week. And that's it. Any questions? <coughs> Any questions for the director? Yes, Commissioner Shea. How are things going as far as the rollout of the Jersey barriers on Main Street? It, it looks like there's a lot of work going on, so I get the feeling that that's probably the, the holdup, um, trying to get all that done before you place them. But, but I figured I would ask. Sure, uh, good question. So we have the, the uh, barriers are all painted. We did get them all painted. And 
I think we were we were allowing Liberty Utilities to finish their work this week, and I believe they will be going out. I don't know if you've heard an update. Um, Director Cummings is is handling the placement of the barriers, so I believe it's going to either be next week or, or the following week. Um, but very soon they'll be go they'll be they'll be going out. Thank you. Any other questions for the director? All right, commissioners' comments. Any commissioners have comments? Um, my daughter is involved with Grow Nashua, and she works at the Toll Street Garden, and they have, I guess, a giant plastic water tank there. But they have been told that there will be water coming, but not until September. Is there any, can I give her an explanation for that? <laughs> sure. Uh, so the explanation for that is that we don't have the funds. Okay. So what we, but we, we, uh, don't hold me to this, we're, we're looking to see if we can get it done within our current budget, but we just haven't dared to pull the trigger yet just because we want to make sure that we, we have plenty of money to get through yeah. um, the fiscal year. If we can, we will. If, if we can't, um, that, that's where September comes in because we would have to take an escrow and repurpose it. Yeah. And so then those funds would not be available until the beginning of September. Okay. But hopefully we, we, we are aware of the need and, and uh, we, we hopefully will be able to get it done before then. Okay, thank so. you. I guess I hear that the, the lots are being, down there at least, are being used much more. I think the cost of food is helping people who haven't gardened before give it a try. Yeah, great. Any comments from commissioners? All right, we'll go on to personnel. Item A, Commissioner Moriarty. I move to accept the retirement of Mr. Kelly Hodgson, a uh, uh, street foreman, effective May 6, 2022. So I, I just, I, I feel compelled to say um, a few things. So. Um, Kelly, uh, Kelly Hodge, we call him Hodge, um, has been working for the city since 1995. He has been an outstanding employee. He was an operator for many, many years, um, did a lot of great work in the city. One of the best operators we've ever had. And, um, and then was promoted to foreman, um, I think three or four years ago now, and um, has, has done a, an outstanding job. So he will be missed, and, um, and I want to thank uh, Hodge for for his service to the city because it's, it's really been very, it's been tremendous, so. All right, thank you. Um, item B, Commissioner Lemon. Motion is to accept the resignation of Mr. Daniel Bellow of Nashua, New Hampshire, collection system operator at the wastewater treatment facility, effective June 3rd, 2022. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item C, Commissioner Shea. The motion is to approve and unseal the non-public minutes for personnel from the Board of Public Works meeting of March 24th, 2022. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item D, Commissioner Moriarty. This motion would be for a non-public session, Mayor. Yes. <coughs> oh, sorry, 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 yes. So um, we've got one item, personnel I'm, item, I believe. I move by roll call that the board go into non-public session pursuant to RSA 91-A3, Roman numeral 2B, the hiring of any person as a public employee. Could you, um, Ms. Photo, yeah. call the roll, please? Commissioner Moriarty? Yes. Commissioner Lemon? Yes. Commissioner Shea? Yes. Mayor Donches? Yes. All right, so we should uh, be a non-public
All right, we're back in public session. Commissioner Moriarty. I move by roll call to seal the minutes of the Board of Public Works personnel non-public meeting of May 25th, 2022, until such time as the majority of the board votes that the purpose of the confidentiality would no longer be served. Roll, please. Commissioner Moriarty? Yes. Commissioner Lemon? Yes. Commissioner Shea? Yes. Mayor Donches? Yes. Motion passes. And do we have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Lemon? I motion that we adjourn. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes, and the meeting of the board, the board of Public Works is adjourned at 5.03 p.m.